the 2024 hurricane season is fast approaching, and with the resurgence of a recurring climate pattern called La Nina knocking on the door, it's really raising questions about the possible severity of this hurricane season. What effect does La Nina and warmer than normal sea surface temperatures have on tropical storms and hurricanes? How did past hurricane seasons with similar setups play out? And will there be more impact than usual over land, including the European continent? Those are all very good and important questions that I'll be answering in this video, so let's get straight into chapter 1. But wait, why do I keep saying La Nina? I thought we were in an El Nino. Well, we are in an El Nino right now, but it's actually going to deteriorate faster than originally expected. Take a look here at the sea surface temperature forecast for the next few months. You can see the classic El Nino signature there with warmer than normal waters along the equatorial Pacific. But even as early as March and especially April of 2024, those orange and red shades quickly turn blue becoming more and more pronounced heading into the summer months. The Climate Prediction Center is agreeing with the current guidance and we're officially under a La Nina watch. On February 8th, the CPC had an ENSO diagnostic discussion about the situation, and they said that an ENSO neutral is likely by April through June of 2024, with increasing odds of La Nina developing by June through August of 2024. So if you're asking what effect La Nina has on hurricane season, let me visualize it for you. The cooling of the waters over the equatorial Pacific is what makes it less favorable for tropical thunderstorms to develop, which otherwise would form during an El Nino. These tropical thunderstorms play a big role on larger scale weather patterns. When they're present during an El Nino, they produce an amplified ridge over the subtropical Pacific and a downstream trough over the Caribbean and western tropical Atlantic. This increases wind shear in the Atlantic Ocean, and since hurricanes do not like wind shear, this makes conditions unfavorable for their development. So when we have a La Nina in place, the cooler sea surface temperatures makes it less favorable for tropical thunderstorms to form, therefore they retract westward towards Indonesia. This removes the limiting factors caused by El Nino, such as increased wind shear, which is why La Nina events are typically associated with more intense Atlantic hurricane seasons. But decreased wind shear isn't the only thing that hurricanes like in order to develop, they also need warm water. Across the Atlantic Ocean, the water isn't just warm, it's warmer than normal for most areas. Longer range model guidance shows us that sea surface temperatures will likely remain above normal as we go through the coming months in tandem with the strengthening La Nina. Just by looking at these two factors, it's likely that we will see an above normal hurricane season. So now the question is, how did previous hurricane seasons with similar setups play out? Let's move on to chapter 2. We're going to discuss two previous La Nina years and the El Nino year of 2023. First up, we have 2017. If you recall, 2017 was a very active hurricane season, ending with 17 named storms, 10 hurricanes, and 6 major hurricanes. This was the same hurricane season that featured a few infamous modern-day hurricanes, such as Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and Maria. So what made that hurricane season so active? For one thing, the rapid transition from an El Nino phase to La Nina, coupled with abnormally warm sea surface temperatures. This sounds oddly familiar to the setup we have coming up for 2024. Here's another example, 2020. This was the most active Atlantic hurricane season on record in terms of named storms. We finished that season with a total of 30 named storms, 14 hurricanes, and an astounding 7 major hurricanes. So what made 2020 such an active season? An above-average West African monsoon, leading to more tropical waves emerging over the tropical Atlantic, also had a La Nina ongoing just like 2017, and therefore a lack of strong vertical wind shear. Once again, very similar to what we have coming up in 2024. And then the last example I wanted to use is the last hurricane season in 2023. I'm not going to be using 2023 as an example because it had the same setup, but it's actually the fact that it was supposed to be unfavorable that made it so remarkable. Like I mentioned earlier, El Nino events are known for suppressing Atlantic hurricane activity, but 2023 basically broke the rules. Sea surface temperatures were so warm that it basically counteracted the effect of El Nino making 2023 finish off as the fourth most active hurricane season on record, 
with 20 named Storm 7 Hurricanes and 3 Major Hurricanes. To start the final chapter of today's video, let's go back to talking about the analog years that I used earlier. These are a couple of images of all the tropical systems that developed in the 2017 and 2020 hurricane seasons. There's a couple things to take notice of, and one of which is just the amount of tropical systems that formed. But also notice how many of these systems impacted land, even including Europe. In 2017, for example, Hurricane Ophelia became the easternmost major hurricane in recorded history in the Atlantic Ocean, and it passed very close to the Iberian Peninsula before impacting Ireland and the United Kingdom as an extratropical cyclone. Then, in 2020, subtropical storm Alpha formed just off the Portuguese coast, making landfall shortly thereafter. 2017 and 2020 were just a couple of examples of what La Nina and warmer than normal sea surface temperatures can do to hurricane activity. So for the 2024 hurricane season, my preliminary predictions are as follows. I expect an above average hurricane season with more named storms compared to the historical average. Then having a greater number of storms overall, along with ocean temperatures warmer than normal, that will increase the risk of tropical systems making landfall, not only in the typical areas like the Caribbean or North America, but also in Europe. As we get closer to hurricane season, I'll definitely post additional updates as more information emerges. The purpose of this video is to give everyone an early heads up to what's coming, because quite honestly, in a world where unprecedented weather events continue happening more and more, it's important to be prepared, perhaps more than usual. If you have any additional questions or concerns, make sure to leave them in the comments down below, and I'll be happy to answer them. If you enjoyed this report, definitely consider leaving a like on the video as well, and subscribe if you're new to Weather Watcher Studios. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.